internet hello you lovelies let's talk about the penguin episode two episode two was jazz where episode one was an orchestra and it is beautiful to see these characters grow and evolve and i am so happy to have an episodic show feel episodic if you're new to this page please hit that subscription bell trying to hit 36k in honor of my very recent 36th birthday also hit a like if you enjoyed this video and let's have a conversation in the comments below because the beauty of this type of show is the week-to-week -week water cooler conversation so i want to hear what you think of the evolution of sophia of penguin of victor let's talk about it all right hey long intros without further ado let's talk about episode two so as i said episode one feels like an orchestra episode one is the long game orchestrations of both the Falcons and Penguin. What they're doing to play the long game in crime is a genius way to start the show. It makes it feel like a crime show. It makes it feel like a classic bit of mafia. It feels like The Sopranos or The Godfather or any of the number of things everyone compared it to. What I love about episode two is that where the orchestration felt long game, mapping this beautiful show out, Episode two felt like jazz. It was literally about playing what you don't hear. Just th those notes and no one having a solo that's planned taking over the solo. This, this unwritten power play of art on display. Jazz being all of the, the cacophony of joy and, and trauma and, and what music can be. And the whole episode's about jazz, about music, about dance, like let's dance. And jazz is improv based, like that is what Penguin has to do here. I love that episode one is long game, episode two is making it up as you go. And I really love that in doing that we see that Penguin isn't just good at this arch, he's good at figuring things out. And I love that Victor gets basically brought officially into the fold here. In the first episode obviously he becomes the Robin to Penguin's Batman, but in the second episode it's a decision. It is something that he has decided to enact and it ends horribly. You can see the doubt in his eyes immediately at what he's become as soon as he accepts this. And I love that this episode juggles that and I assume will continue to juggle that. I assume Victor's not going to be like, oh, things are great. And I really enjoy that Victor is someone put in a horrible situation, but he, like Penguin, and that's part of what Penguin sees in him, is trying to prove himself. And I, I continue to love the relationship between Penguin and Victor, where it's all of my weaknesses are things I see turning into strengths with you. There's a really strong paternal bond between the two of them. And then you've got Sophia, who is someone that no one believes in, that is the outsider in her family, that no one trusts, but everyone needs to start listening to. And she's able to leverage that to her strengths just as Penguin is able to leverage all of his weaknesses to his strengths. People doubting Penguin is how we got here. People doubting Sophia is, I think, how she's going to get where she's going. But both Penguin and Sophia use that leverage against each other. It's this game of chess of what weaknesses I'm letting you see versus what weaknesses you're exploiting versus me letting you think you're winning when you're not. And that whole last conversation that ends with let's dance feels like the culmination of all of that. And them actually somewhat seeing eye to eye is absolutely incredible writing. The writing in the show is second to none. I, I said the first episode, this is everything I wanted from a show since Daredevil. I think this is on par with Netflix's Daredevil, which is the highest praise I can give a show, because I honestly consider that amongst the best comic adaptations of any medium. Adapting a comic is so hard to get the balance right, I think Daredevil nails it. Now I'm saying, I'm gonna give it a few more episodes to be fair, but as of episode two, I think Penguin nails it. And he's not even adapting a linear show. There isn't a ton of Penguin lore. There's not a ton. I mean, obviously 60 years as a supporting character, sure. But he's only had a few solo endeavors. He's only had the recent Tom King Penguin run, which feels a lot like this book. Penguin Pain and Prejudice is very much that growth of him into the modern character. But when you look at Penguin overall, not a lot of backstory as compared to, say, Daredevil, for example, with the building of lore. So it's really impressive how much you're endeared to this take on the character and how well they're balancing comic booky elements like the Burgess jewelry and like the Easter egg stuff and the, the waddle and the certain penguiny, uh, you know, larger than life things with this really, really grounded show that feels like a crime drama. And that I haven't felt to this extent, this 10 out of 10 since Daredevil. I would also argue that the writing wise, it's feeling even more like Breaking Bad to me. I, I love the Sopranos parallels. I wasn't, I mean, I've seen a, a couple episodes, but I didn't watch The Sopranos like I did Breaking Bad. And I hear it's great. It's no, you know, disparity to Sopranos, but the Walt-Jesse relationship, that reluctant partner, that 
in this case feels more like Batman and Robin, but that use of someone that I worry about the safety of that gets corrupted through being in this environment is so interesting. And I think it's really fascinating how that opens us up to Penguin and how that opens us up to this entire family. Now we're also seeing the Falcons show some of their weakness and we're seeing that in the, you know, the calls from coming from inside the house, the problems from within their house with that person literally dying in their basement and them not listening to anything, getting in that position. Like if they had taken anyone's warning, if they had done anything differently, this would have been a very different scenario. And as the body count rises, the stakes get higher. And we see these two low level, you know, in the family, almost in the family with Penguin and Sophia that are now rising through the ranks because they've been ostracized. No one wanted to let Penguin do anything and he forced his way in and Sophia saw that. Episode one, she saw it right away. No one is currently letting Sophia become any more powerful because they don't, you know, believe a woman. They don't believe someone out of Arkham. She's got that hangman legacy. And I'm really curious of the mystery of like what we find out those seven women were murdered for. What we find out about her time in Arkham. We're finding more and more that Penguin tied into that. And what is that? real backstory like we know something but we don't know the details of all that so i'm really curious if and when we find out why she's called hangman if and when we find out some of her time in arkham what we find out becomes a victor i'm really curious if victor makes it even to episode eight it's an eight episode series i'm really curious what victor's arc is going to be is it going to be like jesse penquin from breaking bad where he was supposed to die in the well he was supposed to die initially early in the season and then eventually in the season one finale is that what becomes a victor uh, also, cannot wait to see where this lands leading up to Batman 2. This is every bit the show I wanted it to be. This is every bit the Penguin that I hoped we could get out of Colin Farrell's performance. But what I didn't expect was my love of the supporting characters to be this strong. My love of what the Falcons represent versus the Maronis. That, you know, gang war bubbling. I didn't expect the chess, longboard, crime stuff to feel as impactful as it is. I knew I'd love Gotham, but I'm more invested in Matt Reeves' universe than ever. Penguin Episode 2, what an incredible piece of cinema. Let me know what you thought of Episode 2 in the comments below. Please do hit that subscription bell. I am very much trying to grow this page out as best I can. Try and hit that 36k in honor of my two weeks ago 36th birthday. I'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, doing the Penguin episode three, four, five, six, and onward. Also covering Agatha all along on Wednesdays. Also dropping This Week in Comics times two this week. There's going to be a new This Week in Comics tomorrow. Catching up for the books I missed while I was away in New York, as well as catching us up on that Green Lantern casting news, as well as that Supergirl casting news not a lot of people are talking about. And then you're going to get a Saturday night review. I adored that movie. Now playing in theaters in LA and New York, opening wide next week. Going to have a full review up for that. And if you're watching this, you probably care about Joker because Penguin is a beautiful, grounded love letter to a character and Joker might also be your cup of tea. I am seeing Joker tomorrow. So I'm gonna have an out of the theater review for Joker tomorrow, a non-spoiler up on Wednesday or Thursday, as well as a spoiler review up over the weekend, Friday or Saturday. So, so much coming to this channel. Please hit subscribe. I do not have a better sales pitch than that rant of like eight videos coming in the next eight or so days. So much appreciation to you. So much appreciation to every single person that made The Penguin. I am so happy this show exists. Let me know what you think of episode one versus episode two so far, the orchestra versus the jazz. Let me know what you hope to see in episode three and beyond. Let's have a conversation about The Penguin like in the back of a comic book store. Much love. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.